black new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. Kwame Nkrumah is a controversial but loved historical figure in Ghana's history. A leader and advocate of Pan-Africanism, he led Ghana to independence in 1957. From that point, Ghana became this beacon, a symbol of hope for all African countries. His intellect and determination are admirable, even though almost every aspect of his policies and philosophy remains under strong controversy and he was blamed for damaging the democracy and economy in Ghana. He is still honored and celebrated in Africa. Here are some interesting facts about the first president of Ghana. His actual name was Francis Inria Kofi Ngoloma. He became Nkrumah because his teacher could not pronounce his name correctly. He changed his name officially to Kwame Nkrumah in 1945. Kwame was a teacher at the Roman Catholic Primary School in Elmina. He was also a headmaster in the Axim School. When applying for studies in London School of Economics, LSE, and the nationality he wrote, British subject. At the time, the Gold Coast or Ghana wasn't independent just yet, but it's preoccupied in Krumah's mind already. On his views on education, his probably first influence was his mother, followed by a German Roman Catholic priest, George Fisher. He remained curious and constantly eager to learn throughout his life. His intellectual influences altogether may seem rather irreconcilable. From the age of six to late teenage years, Roman Catholicism shaped his beliefs. Later, as a student, he spent a significant amount of time reading books and materials on philosophy, political science, and history. From works of the greatest philosophers, political leaders, to economic theories and practices, his reading list consisted from Nietzsche, Skopina, and Freud to Aristotle. Gandhi, Karl Marx, and Hitler, and so many more. He studied every theory in philosophy and politics. In his autobiography in 1957, Nkrumah stated, I am a non-denominational Christian and Marxist socialist and I have found no contradiction between the two. Kwame Nkrumah also had a degree in, also had a degree in theology. So he preached in Presbyterian black churches in New York and Philadelphia. Kwame Nkrumah was rather vocal about his ideas. He also embraced some Soviet ideas. He often referred to himself as Africa's answer to Lenin. So in 1963, he even got, at the time exclusive, the Lenin Peace Prize. However, he did not agree to all the Marxism ideas and practices. In one of his essays where he outlines Christian, modern and Marxist interpretations, he expressed his disagreement with the Marxist concept of ownership. He wrote on the idealism and impracticability of communistic theories. He also wrote that communism seems to be unsuccessful in societies where it has been tried because its principles are at variance with him and even with the original nature of property itself. Regardless of what political practices Nkrumah supported and what he disagreed with, his supreme goal was an independent Ghana and a united free and dynamic Africa. He was into theater and writing. One of his aces, Negro History, European government in Africa was published in the Lincolnia, the Lincoln University Students newspaper. He was also a member of the Philosophy Club at Lincoln University. He has written over 20 books, including an autobiography. He wrote the book Dark Days in Ghana while being in exile. 
In the year 2000, listeners of BBC World Service voted him Africa's Man of the Millennium. In the early, early hours of February 24th, 1966, a group of officers and men of the Ghana Army, led by Lieutenant C.B. Later General Emmanuel Kwesi Kotuka and Major Later General Akwesi Amankwa Afrifa, with their active support from the police in an operation code named Operation Code Chop, removed President Kwame Nkrumah from power while he was on a peace mission to Hanoi at the invitation of Premier Ho Chi Minh. President Kwame Nkrumah was told by the Chinese ambassador over there that he has been overthrown in a coup d'etat. President Kwame Nkrumah was received by Turi as head of state and given a 21-gun salute. Kwame Nkrumah was named honorary co-president in Guinea, where he lived for the rest of his life. At the airport, Ture declared that Kwame Nkrumah would be with him as the head of state and secretary general of the Guinean Democratic Party. Sadly, Kwame Nkrumah never returned to Ghana until his demise. In Nkrumah's book, Dark Days in Ghana, Nkrumah revealed that the coup d'etat was the handiwork of the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, of the United States of America. Nkrumah could be described as the first president of Ghana. He led a country to independence and at some point damaged the economy of the country. Since then till today, the man Nkrumah has been one of the greatest leaders in the history of Africa. Thank you so much for sticking around, sticking around to the end of this video. If you are new here, kindly subscribe and give us a like.